our god is a god of restoration i don't know what you're going through if you are living a life of sin i want to speak over you today and i want you to say i want you to know god wants to restore you it really doesn't matter how terrible you and i have lived god is a god of restoration yes he's a god of wrath yes he's a god of judgment but that's because of his god heart of love that's because of his heart of restoration that is why he is calling out again and again he's calling out to israel he's calling out to god's people he's calling out a backsliders and saying will you come back before you ever think of god as a god who is well looking to judge i want you to know that our god is a god who wants to restore i have been through brokenness in my life i've been through failures in my life and i'm sure every one of you has there are moments i have wanted to give up and i said god i don't know how you can use or love someone like me but i have experienced the restoration of god and if god has done it for us how much more god wants to do it for those people who do not know the love of god i want to tell you firstly god is looking to restore the ones that are not saved he wants to restore the unbeliever back to salvation into the kingdom but if you're also somebody who has been backslidden you've known the lord you walked with god and over the last two years the season of you know that 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 the land has gone through has taken people away from the word of god taken people in fact i i heard someone say like this uh pastor hana read somewhere she was telling me that only 10% of believers only 10% which means among those of you seated here only 1/10 percent of believers would naturally be would disciple themselves to walk with god 90% of the church statistics show that they need people to cajole them to walk with God. Are you okay? Get up. God loves you. It's okay. Don't worry. 90% of believers need need pastoral care to even help them walk with God. It's only 10% that pick up their Bibles and read it and say God, wow, hallelujah. That's exciting. This 10% and I want you to know if you are in that 90% that has backslidden If you are in the 90% people I have a word for you today God wants to restore you back He wants to restore you to a place of revival He wants you to carry that heart of revival like Peter you see Peter who walked with God saw miracles saw the food multiplied did all of that and then when he saw Jesus on the cross he has left everything and he went back fishing Jesus goes right after him and says Peter do you love me do you love me he says Lord you know I love you then Peter Why don't you come and serve me Peter? God wants to restore you to a back place from your place of backsliding into a place of ministering unto God. Even to the un- unsaved Samaritan woman the Lord asks, "Will you serve me? Will you get me some water to drink?" And to a backslidden apostle the Lord came with the same message, "Will you serve me? Will you come right back?" and i believe god is calling people this morning because i believe 2022 is going to be a fantastic year if those who will seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be restored back unto you it will be added unto you it will be brought into your life in the midst of your brokenness sin failure god is calling on your heart god is reaching out with mercy today and god wants to take away your pain he wants to take away your brokenness he wants to take of your take away everything that the enemy has been trying to steal from you god wants to bring it back into your life and he wants to take away all that the enemy has put inside restoration the bible says is who, what god's nature is god is a restoring god in fact when you look in the there are different areas of your life god wants to restore he wants to restore you from your sin and from your backsliding but god also wants to restore you from the losses you've gone through in life there are many people that have gone through losses in life you may have you know lost finances you may have lost relationships you may have broken relationship people have walked away from your life you have suffered loss for me some of the greatest losses i consider in my life are people that have walked away from my life i have never reconciled with the fact that people how can have broken relationships that is just not the heart of god it's not the heart of god because god while we were enemies to the cross he made the first move 
while we were enemies to the cross christ jesus demonstrated his love to show how he loves us by dying on the cross only the one who is filled with love knows how to make the first move of love hallelujah there are losses financial losses some of you all may have gone through over the last two years all kinds of challenges some have lost their jobs some have, have gone through problems some have lost loved ones some have lost relationships some have lost all of that but i want you to know god is a god who wants to restore things in our life if you know the the story of ruth in the bible you see it's the story of naomi and uh, and uh, you know elimelech they get they go into this land of moab bethlehem was a house of bread it was a good place but they decided they want to go to moab and in moab they were doing quite well until bad times hit naomi lost her husband and she lost her two sons three men in her life god in one go and they had these two men had married two moabite moabite women orpha and ruth and then they they lose their husbands it was tragedy after tragedy after tragedy in their life and loss after loss after loss in that kind of a circumstance when ruth who was a moabite could have walked away from everything she had an opportunity now me was saying i'm going back to bethlehem or for ruth why don't you go back to your household and there maybe you know they you will have better times there naomi was in a pity party naomi was in the pain of her loss that she was now advising ruth and orpha go away but ruth she tells naomi i have made a covenant with god your god shall be my god your people shall be my people and even if orpha is a backsliding and it looks like she's going to a better future i am going to stick with the covenant because i know the word of god declares seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you when you see your orphans walking away when they look like they're going into a better tomorrow i want you to know there is no tomorrow where god is not present in hallelujah there is no we don't want a tomorrow that god is not in we want a tomorrow where god is in the center of our tomorrows hallelujah when we walk into a tomorrow and if there is loss and if god is in the center of that i want to be in that tomorrow hallelujah because god is a god of resurrection he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly how much more far more above all that we can what ask or I want to be in that tomorrow more than what we can ask or imagine hallelujah where god is doing the imagining for us hallelujah he is doing the dreaming for us god is a god is there who wants to restore in the midst of your losses ruth had gone through a lot of loss but she came with naomi she comes back to bethlehem the house of bread when she comes there naomi is weeping and telling the people look what naomi says naomi is saying I went away empty from here a full from here but God has brought me back empty Look at the language of a woman who is in pain many times when we are in pain we speak rubbish When we go through loss we speak all kinds of things because from the pain inside we speak against God Now me saying I went from here full but I have come back empty And Ruth comes there <laughs> listening to mother in law say all of this one day ruth says uh, if you don't mind can i go out and work cuz we're sitting in this house you know we need food to eat can i is it okay to go out and work ruth now me says okay that's a good idea if you want to work but there is somebody there is somebody here who is a kinsman of you know of my husband and i want you to go there and work she sends ruth into that place gives her the advice ruth goes there and in that place she works hard sometimes when god prepares a restoration into your life beyond what you can ask or what you can imagine now did god give ruth's husband back my answer is no every time god brings restoration into our life it's not always by answering what we asked for listen to me carefully there are things god will restore some in this life and some in the world to come amen everything is not restored every way we ask but even though he does not restore what we ask god always has something better hallelujah everybody say something better 
You see, Ruth's husband had passed away, but God had planned something better. Hallelujah. She was going through. She had to let go of Moab, but God had planned something better. Ruth gets married. She has a baby. She names that baby Obed, and Obed becomes the father of Jesse, and Jesse becomes the father of David. Little did Ruth know that God was going to make her a royal lineage. Kings were going to come from a womb. Something better. Hallelujah. The best Ruth could have imagined in that loss was to be a good wife of somebody in Moab. God had planned something better that her name was going to be written down in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Everybody say after me, something better. When God wants to restore, he may shut one door. I heard many years ago someone say like this, when God shuts the door, he opens another window. And I've known that to be true with God. Don't look at your closed doors and say, why has God shut my door? God's going to throw open the floodgates of heaven. Hallelujah for you and me. For because God always has something better. Amen. Amen. I want you to look at someone next to you and say, God's got something better. Come on. Confess it. Proclaim it. Proclaim it. Proclaim it. God has got something better. Amen. It's always beyond what we can ask or imagine. That is the God who restores. When Adam and Eve fell, God brought something better. Hallelujah. Now you might ask, but that's something better. What did he do something better? He asked them to get out of the garden. Listen to me carefully. It was something better. For a time, he put them out. And on the way out, he was prophesying, boy, listen, Adam and Eve, you have to leave the garden because if they stayed in the garden, they would eat of the tree of life. They would never die. If they would never die, Jesus couldn't come and die on the cross. Asking them to leave the garden was something better. Hallelujah. Under the circumstance, it was something better. So that Jesus could one day come. And when Jesus dies on the cross, something better, not just for Adam and Eve, for all their generations, God was doing something better. He is a God who restores. Hallelujah. Shout it again if you can. There's something better. In your life, God is preparing something better. Even though it tarry a while, it will surely come to pass. Write it down, proclaim it, prophesy it, speak it, pick it up in the spirit. Because this is a year of revival and restoration. For some people, a job with better, more money is something better. But listen to me carefully. For some others, a job with lesser money is something better. Uh Now you don't get me. Because what God has for our life is always something better. I'd rather have a job with lesser money where I can still have a relationship with God than have a job with a lot of money and I have no time to worship Him. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Don't look at the world and think that what they have is always something better. Don't look at, you know, the most beautiful women in the world and think, oh, if I can get a marriage alliance, that will be something better. The Bible says better it is having quiet and having a bread in a corner than living with a nagging woman or a husband that does not care for you. The Bible says these are terrible things. God walking with him, listening to him, he will restore you to something better. Hallelujah. He's a God who wants to restore. And he did that in Ruth's life. It's not always, restoration is not always answering what we ask for, but restoration is always preparing something better. Amen.